Hi guys. I just spoke with Patty Stovall, who is a mother, first and foremost, who is dealing with her own history of abuse and addiction, but is now having to help her own daughter with the terrible disease of addiction as well. And this story is very inspiring, especially if you have been dealing with this yourself. Patty, thank you for joining me. Um, tell everybody who you are and where you're from. Um, my name is Patty Stovall. I am from uh, Northwest Indiana. I'm, it's a suburb of Chicago, Illinois. Um, and I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, you know, I, you, I read your story. And today we're going to be talking about family who have been affected by addictions, by the disease of addiction. Yes. And you have been a former addiction counselor. Yes. Um, done many things in your life. Yes. Including, you know, Netflix and you've done, you've got a master's degree, you've done all of this stuff. Yes. But ultimately the biggest job that we all have is being a mom. Yes. And you have had your own story with addiction where you were, you had your own abusive family situations, your own addictive situations with your own parents but right now you're dealing with your own situation with your own daughter yes tell us about your daughter yes um i have a daughter uh she is 32 and um her addiction started early on in uh her uh high school years her behavior was um she had an addictive behavior early on. Um, I think there was some underlying mental health issues there that maybe as a parent, a young parent, because I had my children young, she, I was 20 when I had her. Um, so I think that, you know, even though we have some recovery in my family growing up, there were some things that I might have missed as a young parent. Um, not seeing or maybe in denial that I didn't get her the help that she maybe needed as a, a younger child. Uh, e either way, um, I, the, the behavior was there. Um, and she took some turns uh, and started using when she was younger. Uh, and uh, <sighs> I have a son too that had some medical health issues and so maybe at that point I might have turned the cheek a little to her and uh, she went off astray and uh, it was very hard as a single parent to uh, raise a sick child and a, a child who had um, was dealing with uh, picking bad relationships and uh, it was a struggle for me. It was really, really a struggle as a parent. So obviously as a young parent, mm -hmm. uh, kids don't come with a textbook. Correct. Correct. And I wish that they did sometimes. Um, and so that, that guilt maybe, you may have had guilt, you may have had all of these emotions, this fear running through you, yes. uh, which is a normal thing to have. But how has those emotions right now, how have they transpired? Do you still have, do you still look and go, that's her journey? Um, what, what are your thoughts on the whole emotional journey for you? For me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, her? You know, um, it's been really difficult at times. Um, as as her addiction has developed, I mean, she's just gotten into some really heavy drugs, heroin, and um, it's been really hard. Um, she's left her children. And um, last year, even though that I've had the experience and worked on my own issues, through addiction and my own family. Um, I think the hardest part for me was I thought I could fix her. And last year, um, we, I had a setback in my own recovery in as an adult child of two alcoholic parents and 
um, just family addictions uh, where I would chase her around the streets and try to find her and um, take her in and she stole from me and she um, and I thought I could trust her and I made you know choices that I thought um, I'm gonna fix her I'm gonna fix her and uh, and then I felt guilty and I felt ashamed and I felt oh my god I could and I cried and it still touches my heart as a parent and I can't fix her. But there came a point um, that I had to say no. Um, and I had to set some boundaries with her. And it's a funny thing because she knew that. She knows this program. She has been in and out of treatment. And she knows that I will not tolerate it. Um, but it's still, as a mother, is so very painful to watch your child. Um, there were many times that I could feel that I thought she wasn't alive. Mm -hmm. And I um, come to know that she had OD'd and almost died. Um, they had to bring her back to life. Um, it was very, it's very painful because I don't know that I may get that call, but I still had to set boundaries with her for my own sanity and my own life. Um, this I have come to know from my own healing and my own work that it's so critically important to understand that this is her journey and these are her lessons. And in my heart, I really believe that whatever happens, I have to trust that there is a lesson here for everyone. Even my grandchildren understand that their mother's addiction at 10 years old is not about them because we have helped them understand that and help them set boundaries with her. And we talk about that even in her times that she has small bouts of being clean and she has them periodically over the last couple of years. Um, but it's so important for everyone. Yeah. It's very important. You know, it's, it's beautiful that you're there for your grandchildren. Yes. And that you're helping them understand the boundaries that they have to put on their mother, which no child should ever have to do. Sure. Um, but like you said, we, there's lessons in all of this. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard when somebody is absolutely immersed within the whole disease, the whole situation. They don't see the lesson. They struggle with the lesson. They, they're, they're getting to that. It's frustrating. But as a mom, that must have been exceptionally hard to say no to your daughter. What was it like the first time that you did? You said no. Well, it was kind of twofold for me. There was a freeing, freeing part of it. And then there was some guilt. There was some guilt that came with that. But I had to forgive myself because I was at this point where she had taken so much from me mm -hmm. um, that I had worked for, you know, she had stolen from my home. I had, you know, um, I, I couldn't take that anymore. I couldn't allow that to continue having drugs brought into my home and finding things and needles in my home. And I, I couldn't live that life. I had lived that as a child for so many years. And I refused 
to live that. Um, it was very painful. It was very painful. Uh, and not only did I have the pressure of her, I had the pressure of my ex-husband who, uh, you know, expected me to take her. And so it wasn't not just, you know, it was multiple things that were pulling at me. And, um, you know, I had to work on that from my own inside um, to be strong in that area. Um, but she knew, I think, you know, I said to her, I had to do it with love. I had to do it with love. I love you, but I just can't do it. Yeah. Uh, and she was on the street. She was homeless. And to know that she was out there was sad for me. Yeah. It was really sad. Do you think that this has helped you heal your past? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And your past may have actually been able to give you the tools to help her now. Yeah. Yeah. And my grandchildren too. Yeah, absolutely. My grandchildren. One thing you said is that you can't fix her. Yeah. And as an addiction counselor, which is something that you have done in your life, that must be very hard. But as a parent, we can't fix our children. Right. There comes a point that we have to say, you are ma now making decisions that I cannot govern. Right. And we are no longer in control. Well, we can't be in control of how they're going to be. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be watching this, probably going through the same thing. What can you, what advice can you give to, say, a mother who is trying to fix them? That whole codependency, that whole embroiled situation that is like all of these emotions going, what would you say to them just from your heart to another parent? I think one of the most important things for, is to get the support, get mm -hmm. support from other people who are struggling with the same thing. Because I think when you have the support of others uh, who can guide you, um, who understand what you're dealing with, it makes it a lot easier um, if you're not alone. Yeah. To understand. Um, I have the support. I had the... Uh, I had the people to cry to. I had the people to guide me, um, to say, you know, um, this sucks. It really yeah. sucks. It hurts to know that your child is out there, no money, living in the streets, sleeping on the who knows where, you know, and um, three, four days go by, or you don't even know if they're dead or alive, and you have to make reports to, to missing person reports, you know, it, um, you know, there were points where she was in jail and I couldn't answer the phone because I just, she wanted out and I wouldn't get her out. And, you know, letting her deal with the consequences were beneficial to hoping she would get to treatment. Um, you know, those are the things that you want, even though they hurt me, they may be beneficial for her mm -hmm. to help her, you know. Um, those consequences may force her to get to where she needs to be. I'm not helping her by saving her or rescuing her. Um, so that is one piece of advice is don't rescue them because those consequences may help them get the help they need. Um, but to get the help you need um, to learn how to set those boundaries is so critical. Yeah. Did you ever feel judged by other parents um, by them saying, oh, it's your fault, you made them this? Do you ever feel judged like that? You know, um, I'm fortunate to, today that I don't surround myself with people who judge me in that. And I don't tolerate that in my life at all today. Maybe in the past I might have, but I've come to find today, I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care because 
those people don't sit in my shoes. Even if I've chased her around the streets and made those choices, you don't sit in my shoes and deal with what I deal with. So, but I don't care. <laughs> I make mistakes of my children and um, I do the best I can with what I know. And I, um, but today I don't really care what people think. So you have to get to that point. Um, we just really do. Um, obviously your daughter, the, hindsight is twenty twenty. There must have been a, a moment that you, that now looking back, you've gone, oh, that's, I, now I see the process. But what, what did she start off doing when you said it was a long thing? She started in high school. What was the things that she started to do? And when did you notice that there was a problem? You know, I think it may be even some farther back than that. I think it may even go back to the divorce. Mm. Uh, I divorced her father. He, um, and I don't, I don't like putting blame on anyone because I feel like I take responsibility. We both take responsibility for, I always take responsibility for all of my part in anything in my life, but you know, divorce is hard on children. And she was young, um, probably seven. And I feel like that maybe had a contributing factor she also had been affected by some abuse from someone right. uh, she had mentioned to me as an adult uh, at a young age that i didn't know that happened so right. there was some uh inappropriate abuse mm -hmm. that occurred um so there was some self-esteem issues some abuse sexual abuse. Um, so there were some other things, contributing factors along that happened mm -hmm. uh, that I did, wasn't aware of in her life. Uh, she made some choices with some boys um, and it just, you know, it happened. Things happened. And, uh, you know, we did counseling in sixth grade we did counseling in freshman year and then she wanted to live with her father and drinking started and i think it just choices choices happened and uh you know when my son got really ill that became a huge focal point and i think that she just kind of took off it just took off right um I'm sure a lot of um, mothers in this situation uh, are now, bells are going off in their heads sure. and realization um, in my own head, you know, as a mom of, of, a, of a son who just left home, you stop worrying about them. But I think there has to be, and you, you mentioned something earlier where it's their life, it's their plan. Mm -hmm. We can't fix we can't do anything about it so what do you feel right now is your purpose what do you feel as though you now want people to know because you've mentioned to me like i got a story and i know people need to hear it and i yeah. know i need to help so yeah. what do you feel like people need to know from this yeah i really feel like you know i think it's so important that always thought as a young child that there was this door and there was always these secrets that people never knew and nobody talked about. Mm -hmm. And I see it in the work I do in readings all the time. I'm part of a big group of an, and I'm an administrator in there and I see all these people come in all the time who talk about depression and addiction and 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 problems and and it's so there it's i feel it and i'm so attracted people are so attracted to me because it's my energy probably 
and I feel like I have a story and it shouldn't be that people can't talk about this. Yeah. It needs to be talked about. And I feel like this pandemic has made it even more of a secret and it's becoming that people being home, it's, it's probably worse now maybe than it ever may be. Yeah. Because it's behind closed doors. Yes. And it's very scary to me that these children may be sitting just like I was when I was 10 years old and hearing the violence and the screaming and the drinking and the drugs and the breaking of things and the hiding and, the, and all that violence hiding under my bed or in my closet. And I feel like there's a story that could be told and it needs to be told. And uh, yeah, I just really do. Yeah, really, really do think I could be there to open some doors for some people. Yeah, it's it's powerful. So, you know, let's say somebody who is going through the addiction, has the disease with the addiction, and they're watching this right now. Mm -hmm. And they may have had a situation where they don't feel understood by their mom and dad or their parents or their guardians or their friends because they are again in this world of addiction mm -hmm. and they are looking and going, oh my God, if only I could talk to my mom and dad, my, thinking that their mom and dad or their family members do not understand them. What would be your words of wisdom to those people right now? to help them get the help that they need. Yeah. So I think it's so important for them to reach out to someone. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, there it's it's there. The help is there. It's in your communities. It's in your it's there there's there's meetings, there's people, there are numbers to call, there are, you know, I know that, um, you know, in our community, police in our community have come together where they ha are working with local AA and NA in their community to help them get to those facilities or hook them up to somebody to talk. Um, I know that today that uh, Zoom is an option for NA and NA. There, you know, you can get on there and there are thousands of meetings to for people to get on. I did it. I seen it. Um, that you can speak to somebody. Um, there are available things that you can do to talk to someone right now, right this minute, 24-7, 24-7, if someone is available for you. So, um, and anonymously too. And anonymously, yes, yes, there is. There, there is always someone to talk to, all the time. Patty, I... Th I your story inspires me. Your story, you are a remarkable woman. You are, you have so much strength. You have so much um, compassion. And I know that your daughter is, is, it's very dear to your heart. You've, you've had this battle most of your life, but I'm so proud of you for coming forward and, and sharing because I'm realizing that you're not alone, you're going through this. So there, we all have our own little skeletons in the closet, whatever they may be. We have to work on, on things, but you're being vocal about yours and you now want to help. And, and I sincerely wanna thank you for bringing such a delicate topic and bringing it with such compassion and love to me in order to help other people. So, you know, Thank you so much for sharing your story. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to make, make a difference in some, someone's life, I hope. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you wish that you could share or want to share in this moment? Um, no, I just hope that 
people hear that they're important and special and they have options. That's it. I just really, really hope that. Good. Thank you.